we're going to use RxJS and observables to manage state in our React app. So this video has a bit of theory up front explaining some differences between Angular and React when it comes to state management. Uh, it provides important context, but if you want to skip straight to the implementation, you can go to this timecode. So in an Angular app like the one we're looking at now, we have this concept of a service that can be injected into whatever component we like. So this is generally a singleton service, which means a single instance of that service is shared throughout the app. And it is an easy way to share data or related methods. So we might have a client service, for example, that we use to share a list of clients throughout the app. And we have methods on that service for adding or removing clients or any other kind of logic related to the clients. This is not a concept that React has built in. Remember that one of the defining features of Angular is that it provides you with most things out of the box and has strong opinions about how your application should be structured. React is primarily concerned with building and rendering the user interface of your application. Everything else is generally provided by other libraries or our own implementations. The concept of having some kind of facade or abstraction to handle related data operations isn't something unique to Angular. It's just a good idea in general to have all of the data or methods related to managing and retrieving clients, for example, in one spot that can be used throughout the entire application rather than having the logic sprawled throughout the application and repeating ourselves all over the place. In React, we have the use state hook, which is great for managing local UI state. That is to say state that only a single component needs to know about, like whether a button is disabled or if something has been toggled. But what about when we need to share that state among multiple different components? This is where things get a bit murky with React because there are so many different ways we could go about it. We could use many different patterns like composition, prop drilling, or hooks, or singleton objects, or React context, or Redux, or a myriad of different options. It's hard to tell what the right way is to do it because there isn't really a right way to do it. So if you're watching this video, then chances are you are an Angular developer trying to get your head around React. And so you might prefer a solution that feels a bit more Angular-y. So my general philosophy with state management is one, if the application state is reasonably simple, use RxJS and observables to manage state. Two, if the application state is complex, use the Redux pattern. So we're going to be covering the first approach. Uh, using Redux in React is certainly something you won't have any trouble finding content for. Now, my preference for using RxJS to manage state is certainly something that has been instilled into me through many years of using Angular, but this is not a case of trying to shoehorn Angular concepts into React. The approach is a reasonably simple but powerful and flexible pattern for React that gives us something that achieves similar goals to what we are used to doing using services in Angular. So most of this approach was inspired by a blog post by Ebenezer Don that I will link in the description. Okay, with the introduction out of the way, let's have a look at what this approach actually looks like. So we are going to use this example where we have a list of data on one page and we want to add to that list of data using a separate page. So we can click this add button here. I can type whatever I like, click add item, and then that's immediately going to be uh, displayed on this separate page. This means that our home page needs to react to data coming from our add item page. Now the key part of making this work will be the items store that we are going to create. So we're going to walk through building that step by step, and then we will look at how that is integrated into our home page and our add item page to make this all work. So I just have a standard TypeScript file here in a folder I called store. There is no special concepts going on here. This is just a regular old file in a regular old folder. With Angular, we have the concept of dependency injection, and most of the time Angular handles creating our components dependencies for us. 
But in this case, we are just going to be exporting an object from this file and we will just use that object somewhere else by importing it. There's no need to declare it as an injectable or set it up as a provider or include it in a module or anything like that. So the first thing we are going to do is add a subject from RxJS. Now, unlike with Angular, we are actually going to have to install RxJS in React if we want to use it. So you can just run npm install RxJS to get that set up. And I'm not going to be covering how RxJS works in general in this video. I'll link to some more content in the description for that. The important thing to know about a subject here is that if we subscribe to it, we'll be able to receive and respond to any data that is emitted on the observable stream that it provides. And we will also be able to call the next method on that subject in order to emit data on that stream for anybody listening. So we are using TypeScript. So let's also create some interfaces to define the type of data that we want to be managing. So this store will be responsible for storing our item state, which is just an array of items. We are defining what an individual item looks like here. And then in our items state interface, we are just saying that items is an array of the item type. So all our state is storing this time is this array of items, but we could also extend this to store other types of data related to items, like maybe a Boolean that indicates whether the items have finished loading in from storage or something like that. We also create an initial state, which will just be an empty array for our items. And importantly, we supply our item state type to the subject, which we are doing up here. So that means that this subject is going to be emitting data that matches this item state interface. So technically we don't need to set up all these types, uh, but we are using TypeScript, so we may as well make use of it because it does make our lives a lot easier in a lot of ways. And then we can just create the store object itself. And this is what we're going to be importing into other files to access this state. But right now, obviously it is just an empty object, which isn't useful at all. So we are going to add methods to this now that will allow us to retrieve the data from this store and also add new items to the store. And by adding something to the store, I mean we're going to be updating this items array in our item state to contain actual data. So this is where things are kind of similar to an Angular service. This is our abstracted location that we can store data and methods we want to interact with throughout the uh, application. So in a sense, you could consider this store that we're building to be like an Angular service. So let's create our first method. And this first one is going to be a little bit tricky. So let's take a look and talk through it. So all we've done here is add a subscribe property to our item store object. And we are setting the value of that property to a function. So this method, which we have called subscribe, is how our components will be able to listen for data updates from the store. So we pass in a parameter called set item state. So what we do when we're trying to subscribe to data updates from this store is we will pass in our set items state from the standard use state hook. So if you aren't familiar with how the use state hook in React works, you might want to quickly look that up. But the basic idea here is that we are setting this up just as we normally would with the use state hook. We're getting this method from it that allows us to update this item state locally. And we're passing that into the subscribe method in our store. So that is what is getting passed in here. So what this allows us to do is that every time our subject emits some data, we can call the set item state that we passed in from our component and have the subject update the local state for that component. So for example, we might be passing this set item state from the use state hook in from the home page. We're subscribing to the subject in this item store. And anytime that new data is emitted from that subject, we are going to call that set item state that was passed in with whatever that new state was which is what is going to allow this to be updated with that new data. So doing this would be just like calling set item state 
from within our home component, except it is our subscription to the subject in our item store that is triggering the update from outside of the home component. It's also worth keeping in mind that you can also just supply set item state directly to the subscribe call here, like this. The only reason that I am setting it up this way is that it makes it a little bit more obvious that we are subscribing to this subject and just passing along whatever data it emits to set item state. So it just makes it all a bit more explicit, but it's not actually required. You can just pass set item state directly to the subscribe. So this is the key part of this whole process. So it might be worth just sitting there and thinking about it for a little bit until it all clicks. Now you may have noticed we are using an any type here. That is because the type for set item state is confusing and looks scary. And I didn't want this example to look any more complex than it already did. However, we will add that type in now. So that type does look pretty intense, but it is pretty easy to determine what this type should be. If you are using something like VS code, you can just hover over the set item state that we're passing in and you'll be able to see what it is. So we have a way to listen to our store for updates to the data. Now we need a way to add new data to the store. So to do that, we are going to add another method to our object here. So this one might also look a little bit scary if you're not familiar with using immutable data or reduces, but the concept is pretty straightforward. We are just overriding our existing state with a new state object based on the old one. So rather than just mutating the existing state object, we create a new object and spread the old one out inside of it to recreate it. So we already have our initial state defined here. So what we're doing is we're updating that with a new object. We use the spread operator on the existing state object. So that's just going to essentially duplicate it, but we don't just want an exact copy of our state. We want to override the items property from that object with our new items that we're adding but we also want to keep any existing old items as well. So we also spread out state.items inside of this array to get all of the old values in the array first. And then we add our one new item at the end of the array as well. So the end result here is basically what we would get if we were just to call state.items.push item. We just want to add our new item into the existing items array within our state but using push is a mutable operation. It's going to mutate the existing object rather than creating a new object like what we're doing here. So if you're not familiar with immutable data and why that might be something that is desirable, I'll link to some more resources in the description. And the final piece of all this is to call subject.next with our new state that we just created. So this will cause anything that is subscribed to this subject like our homepage to get this newly updated data and be able to react to it. And you might also notice this weird type we are using here. This is a utility type we're using called omit. So we want to give our items an ID because react likes things to have uh, unique IDs when it's rendering them, but we want to handle creating the ID from within our add item method here. So we say that the data we are expecting to be passed in will match our item type, but it won't have an ID. So we're saying to use the item type, but just omit the ID property from it. And finally, we're going to add one more property to our item store, which is going to be our initial state to make that accessible. So we'll be able to import that initial state into something like our homepage. So that's the hard part done. Using it is relatively easy. So on our home page, we want to retrieve any data from the store and react to it every time it's updated. So to do that, all we need to do is just use the use state hook in our component like we would normally do just with a few minor differences. So the first difference is that when we are setting up our item state here, we initialize the use state hook with the initial state from our item store. And that's why we just uh, included it in that object. Then in a use effect hook, 
we can subscribe to updates from our store. As I mentioned before, by passing in set item state from the use state hook, we are basically creating a, a portal or line of communication for our subject in the store to be able to trigger this local set item state with any new data that is emitted on the stream. An important thing when using RxJS and observables is to unsubscribe from any subscriptions you create. So we are going to use the cleanup function of use effect here to unsubscribe just before this component is destroyed. And it's also important to remember to supply this empty array to use effect. This means we don't want to trigger this effect in response to anything changing. We just want it to run once when the component is created. Without this empty array, this will actually be run on every render of this component, which could cause some unwanted behavior. And with this little setup out of the way, then we can just use item state from our uh, use state hook here, just like we normally would. And it's going to contain all of the values we are interested in. So you can see here, I'm just mapping over those values to render out an ion item for each item in the state. And triggering the add item method to add new data to the store is even easier. All we need to do is import the item store and then we just call the add item method whenever we want. So in this case, I'm just calling it in reaction to a, a form being submitted. But all you need to do wherever in your code is just call item store dot add item and then supply it with the values that it needs. So once we do this, it's going to trigger the add item method in our store, which is going to take the item that was passed in. It's going to add it to our state. And then our subject is going to emit that new state using the next method, which is going to emit that data on the observable stream. And since we are subscribed to that observable stream here, the state in the home page is going to be immediately updated with whatever new value was just passed in. And then our item state here is going to be able to react to that data and render the new item in the list. So now that we've re-implemented our store, let's all just check that this all still works. So again, I'll go to add an item. I'll just write test, click add item. That's going to trigger that add item method from the add item page. And then our subscription on the home page has picked that up and it's rendered that new data in the list. So I've tried a few different state management approaches with React, and this is the only one so far that just feels good to me, which probably has a lot to do with the fact that I love Angular and observables. Uh, it's relatively simple for the power and flexibility it provides, and is kind of like a very simplified version of the Redux pattern. So if you do end up needing to use Redux at some point, and you are familiar with this approach, it probably won't feel super foreign to you, just you know, kind of significantly more complex. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.